Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today. Two Norwegians enter, one Norwegian leaves as the Viper, playing as the Slavs in teal, gets ready to take on MBL, playing as the Aztecs in red. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings with all kinds of animals and scouts, and try to get their butts up to feudal age as fast as possible, let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now the Slavs very much a Civ that focuses on their melee units, their infantry line, which is pristine and already quite strong, can be upgraded to do trample damage. And their unique unit, the Boyar, is a fairly slow but super tanky, powerful cavalry unit with an incredibly high amount of melee and pierce armor. Think Teutonic Knight on a horse. Now, to support their melee units on the field of battle against harassment by things like ranged units, all Slavic Siege Workshop units are 15% cheaper, which is amazing because the Slavs do have access to all Siege Workshop units with the exception of Bombard Cannons, and those cheaper Siege units can be combined with those Slavic Monks, which do move 20% faster than normal to generate a powerful Siege Monk Rush, adorably called a Smush. Now, Slavic Castles themselves can also be upgraded so that 40% of their stone cost is replaced with wood, which does save a player about 250 stone per castle. Now, to help grow their big military on the field of battle, both supplies and gambesons are free of charge. Their farmers work 10% faster, and their barracks, their archery ranges, their stables, and their siege workshops, basically the vast majority of their military structures, also provide five population space just like a house which in Feudal Age does free up a little bit of wood for things like archer units. Not that the Slavs are uh, known for their ranged units, but you never know what we're going to see with these two very versatile players. And speaking of two players, let's take a look at MBL, his Civ, the Aztecs, a warrior monk civilization. Their monks gain five hit points for every tech that's researched. So a fully upgraded Aztec monk comes with a massive 95 HP compared to the usual 30 or 45. Now, to help with the gold cost of upgrading your monks, which is significant, any one of these bad boys, any one of these relics that are collected by the Aztecs generate 33% more gold than usual. Now, on the field of battle to support their monks, all Aztec military units are produced 11% faster, their skirmishers can be upgraded to have extra range and attack, and their infantry, which is already pretty damn cool, can be upgraded to get a plus four attack boost. Oh, it seems like he lost control of the zebra there, did MBL. As I was mentioning, their infantry can get a nice plus four broad attack boost, which does help out with their unique unit, the Jaguar Warrior. Overall, a middle of the road infantry unit, but one that comes with a massive attack bonus against other infantry, which may prove a little problematic for our Slav, although let's wait and see. Now, the Aztecs, to support their military production, their villagers from the very get-go do carry three extra resources. And take a look at the top right of your screen. They start with a with a 150 gold, which is 50 extra gold. So basically, they either get loom for free or they can train two extra militiamen, whatever their fancy is, wherever their fancy takes them. Those are the two civilizations, both players at 16 villagers pulling the nearby animal population to its death so that they can grow the human population MBL already out on the map. Will he see the scout? No, the two scouts miss each other. But MBL discovers the primary stone, so he knows where his opponent generally is. And now the house will confirm that the Viper is, in fact, on the left and not somewhere here on the right. The Viper also heading out into the middle of the map will run into the uh, annoying, stubborn zebra that MBL couldn't push. And let's see where he goes. He's pivoting south. Let's take a look very quickly at the resources while both players click up the feudal at the exact same time after researching the exact same upgrade that is Loom. And again, take a look at the top left. Take a look at the top right. You'll see the Aztec 50 more gold. Pretty cool feature. Oh, one thing before we get into the location of the sonar, maybe while because it still is at 50%. Once this barracks completes, you'll see that the Slavic population will be 19 out of 25 as opposed to 19 out of 20. Actually, yeah, let's take a let's take a quick quick break, commercial break. Here we go. Boom, 25. Does free up a little bit of wood, especially in feudal age once uh you start getting out archery ranges, whatever it is you want, stables, barracks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Primary gold for our slab, nice and secure on the back, annoyingly placed on a hill though, which means there ain't going to be no town center anywhere nearby here. Uh, he's going to have to rely on mining camps. Primary stone we saw very exposed to the front and additional resources to the south and to the north. 
MBL. Primary gold exposed to the front. Ooh, can he fit a town center here? Uh, the question of whether he can is different than whether he should, but it kind of seems like he could potentially fit a town center here. Although maybe not. It does kind of look like it's only three tiles instead of the four that a town center is. In any event. Also annoyingly placed near or about a hill. And the scout has to rush, rush away because a second villager does show up. But she's fighting from the low ground. But the scout is here as well. Let's take a break from resource gathering and looking to see how this battle shapes up. Feudal Micro, always super fun to watch. But the Viper, he's not going to lose his scout, is he? Nah, he's gonna, of course he's going to run away. Okay. <laughs> of course he's going to run away. Primary stone for him looks like it's nice and secure in the backwards position with additional gold to the north and additional gold to the northwest. Both bases, if you look at the minimap, completely open. A few sparse forests in the backwards position for our Aztec. One forest in the backward position for our Slav, one to the side. But the forward portion of his base, the forward portion of the Aztec base, both completely wide open. So should be a fairly interesting game in terms of the next, uh, let's call it five to ten minutes. No easy wall offs just yet. So we'll see how the players decide to play this so far. No kills. Although some units are dangerously close. The Eagle Scout at ha literally half health. And somewhere here are a villager or two with also half of their HP gone. Viper stops in the middle of the map with a second scout. It looks like he's also trained a third. Oh, it's up here to the north. Most likely looking for relics. Now, very much like a game versus the Lithuanians, a game versus the Aztec is one where you really do want to keep them away from the relics. You do not want any civilization with any kind of bonuses. So I'm talking Lithuanians. I'm talking Burgundians where their relics also generate food. Uh, and the Aztecs, for example, to get the relics, you do not want to make it easy for them. So the Viper has discovered the relic to the north, which is fantastic. He also <laughs> just got the tip of the relic to the south. And that's basically all he's seen. Looks like MBL has already gotten a kill. Oh, the scout of the Viper. And oh, the Viper returns the favor. I missed both kills. I apologize. <laughs> I missed uh, just the, literally the uh, the actual kills within seconds. I missed it, but we'll have seen it in picture in picture as MBL here using that faster Aztec military production to swarm his opponent. Seven army count to three, now four. He is down a villager. He is housed. We've seen MBL get housed before. And he looks like he's about to get housed again if he doesn't stop. Uh, he's producing nine units and he's got population space for five. So he's going to get housed again unless he plops down another house. I was uh, clicking here on the minimap because I thought this might be a house. This little red square with a white uh, outline. But no, the house is going next to the farms. And let's see what MBL can do here with a Feudal Age army. I guess the answer is die. It looks like the Eagle Scout bites the dust. But there is another one already being trained and another one already out on the map. As it gets attacked, <laughs> as a, a Spearman gets attacked here by a Lion... Now the Feudal Age army takes on its greatest threat, Mother Nature. Viper, sneaky skirmisher to the back, gets one shot off. But MBL, did he see this ahead of time? It doesn't seem like it. He is heading out and then quickly <laughs> retreats back. The Viper here doesn't want to engage. Uh, I wonder why. Is it just the Spearmen? I don't think Eagle Scouts come with any attack bonus against Cavalry. No, it's only Eagle Warriors and Elite. But the Spearman is enough. One poke gets rid of 18 HP, which is pretty bonkers for a unit that has, what, 40? 45? Well, 40, 40 uh, surviving HP. The fight over the center relic begins. Viper has to be very careful here. There's a lot of Spearmen, so he's trying to draw MBL's army. He wants MBL's army to move as much as it possibly can so that these skirmishers can snipe the Spearmen and a fantastic job so far by the Viper. I mean, both players losing units, but two Spearmen for a Skirmisher is pretty damn good, especially when you're so outnumbered here in the center of the map. But the Spearmen are now in the back, as are the Scouts. So they'll get a few pot shots off at these Eagles. Okay, another Eagle dies. Viper's taking the kill count lead here, but he's been pushed back to the limit of his settlement. So not much more wiggle room for him. But MBL is exposing his Spearman. Why is he exposing his Spearman like this to take a uh, Skirmisher fire? 
our slab adding in more and more skirmisher. Our Aztec is moving out onto the middle of the map with a whole bunch of red dots. What is going on here? So many skirmishers, a few spearmen and a uh, eagle are joining. Sounds like a uh, like a joke, right? Two skirmishers, a spearman, and an eagle warrior enter a bar. I shouldn't say two. A, a skirmisher, an eagle warrior, and a spearman walk into a bar. L fini finish the joke in the comments. <laughs> For now, MBL doing an amazing job keeping the high ground here. Even though he's losing spearmen, but... To be honest, with this reinforcing group... Losing a few spearmen here and there is not the end of the world. He's going to significantly outnumber his opponent here. He already does on paper 18 to 9, and he's still just down one villager, but the Viper's heading up to Castle. MBL nowhere close. Finally, the Viper decides to engage. Horrendous engagement for the Viper. Loses all but one of his scouts. Did he get a little too antsy in the pantsy going up to Castle Age? That engage would have been fine maybe in a, a minute and 15 seconds when he's super close to Castle Age, but he's still pretty damn far away. And MBL is one-shotting his units. And what's not one-shot is poked to death by this eagle, although Town Center should be able to at least do some damage. Oh, kill box created here by the Viper. He was expecting melee. He was not expecting range. Both of these civilizations, oddly similar. Not gonna lie, with the exception of their siege and obviously cavalry, their melee is very similar, and they're also similar in that they absolutely have terrible ranged units. I don't know that the Viper necessarily expected his opponent to double down on skirmishers so much. How many skirmishers does he actually have? Nine skirmishers. He's also now a minute and 40 seconds from Castle Age. Arastic double the kill count. 14 to 7, and that includes one villager. But the Viper's back. He's mining more gold underneath the very threat of death here plus one armor on these men at arms should be okay squires so he's gonna be able to try at least to catch up to some of these units definitely won't be able to catch up to the eagles oh, game did glitch there i apologize i have written everyone i could possibly write about to describe the glitch a lot of them have not responded, a lot of them have responded, but at the end of the day, it seems like the answer is not much we can do at the moment. <laughs> Upgrade your drivers. Thank you. <laughs> In any event, the Viper is chasing this army out now. How many, what, what are we working with here? Seven men at arms plus two pierce armor for them. Remember, they get gamisons for free, the slabs. So that basically immediately helps out. Also get supplies for free. That also immediately helps out. Long Swordsman is here. Should be able to have a pretty good time against the Eagle. Plus six, right? Yeah, plus six attack against Eagles. Two armies out on the map. Both players in Castle. Our Aztec is doubling down on crossbows. Against a Civ that has infantry that comes with free Gambesons. An interesting choice out of MBL. Like I said, both of these... Uh, both of these civs fairly similar, militarily speaking. And I'm going to get reamed out in the comments if I don't specify. What I mean is, both of them don't have, I think, Thumbring, which makes their Castle Age Archer units pretty subpar. One is missing an attack upgrade. One is missing an armor upgrade <laughs> on their archers. But in Castle Age, they're both capable of being plus two, plus two. They're both missing, missing Thumbring. For now, though, these crossbows are raining holy hell down on these um, uh, long swords. I was about to see men at arms, but then remember last second that he has already upgraded them. Ten long swordsmen. Is the Viper expecting a big eagle transition? Because it's not coming. Five eagles is not a big transition. MBL is now down two villagers, but ahead about 50% army count. 20 to 14. The Viper, where are you going? He's got knights out. Good counter to all of this. Are these still scouts? Yes, they are. So I think the Viper should realize when he clicks one of these eagles or looks at it that it's a scout and it's not a warrior and realize that his opponent is not going eagles at the moment. I mean, he obviously can at any moment. With Garland Wars, they do pack an absolute insane punch. But at the moment, I, I mean, going infantry, oh, the MBL is just picking off so many villagers. Three villagers kill count identical. 25-24, an emergency town center. Holy moly. 19 villagers. 18 villagers. 
<laughs> oh, MBL is missing everything. He's missing everything. Oh, damn you. Thumb ring missing. Thumb ring. And the Viper is in here, but a quick wall off. These are still very slow melee units, which means MBL can wall this off and be absolutely safe and secure. Looks like the knight bit the dust. And now MBL has to back away. The Viper backs away. Both players ripping into each other's bases. The Viper finally manages to get a villager kill. But he is actually ahead. I was going to say but, but then I looked at the numbers. No, he is actually ahead in total kill count. I know, what am I talking about? Oh my god. I just had an absolute brain fart. No, the Viper is also behind on kill count. Military kills 28 to 28. So identical military kills. Oh, the villagers. The villagers get the hell out of our gold mine, they say. This is our... What's the uh, chemical name for gold? AU, I think. AU, maybe. Let me know in the comments below. Chemistry was my worst subject in high school. Man, oh man, did I not enjoy chemistry. Biology was fun. Physics was fun. A lot of uh, science-based courses were fun, but chemistry, I just could not wrap my head around chemistry. I don't know why. This must be common for people, right? You, you, there's just a one topic. I mean, look at look at them missing. They are just missing every volley. <laughs> and even when it's standing still, damn you, thumb ring. Um, it must be true for everyone, right? There's one course in university or one course in high school that you just absolutely don't connect with and then just suck at. Unless you're a uh, one of these uh, Mensa geniuses where you've just connected and love everything. It's also possible. There were students like that. Anyway, I'm going to stop reminiscing, ruminating third town center for our Slav, a third already up for our Aztec to the north, one to the south. But again, the location of these resources is super annoying. You're going to have mining camps for these it's primary gold. Yeah, he's decided, forget it. I'm not going to fit a town center up here, so I'm just going to build a mining camp. The Viper, exactly the same uh, logic, although it did manage to place a town center pretty close by, not that it's helping with the gold mining. But oh, uh oh, MBL doesn't notice that attack could have been a little better. There we go. Does manage to get a self own out of 11 kills. One must be friendly fire. Yes, it is. But maybe that was all just one big feint, one big distraction. One villager learns that the hard way as he lies in a puddle of grape juice here. And now the crossbows are here. They are going after the villagers. <laughs> oh my god oh my god not a single bolt connected there yikes both players kind of feeling each other out kill count i mean the viper is now ahead in the kill count but it's not a major advantage eight kills difference so both players are kind of just ripping into each other's hindquarters the viper attacking to the south trying to attack into the north mbl doing the same to the north tried to sneak in a little force here to the south didn't expect a mangonel to be there Monks are also dying here, but not before it looks like they got a few conversions. More Aztec monks are on the field. Men at arms or long swords. I don't know why I keep saying men at arms. Long swordsman running away. Unfortunately, didn't run far enough. Gets converted by the Aztec monk. And by the way, let's take a look at those Aztec monks and see. What their HP is. Okay, no upgrades at all. Okay, there, never mind. We're gonna get Sanctity. Take a look at its HP jumping in 3, 2, 1, 50. Not only the additional 15 that Sanctity gives you, but also the extra 5 because it is the Warrior Monk Civilization. And here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. MBL, he's on the high ground. He's on the high ground. The Viper, a little premature with his first volley. MBL backs away, but he's surrounded on three sides. A Mangonel, Knights, Knights. Oh, the Vipers must be salivating, trying, hoping that he can close on this army and wipe out these crossbows. I mean, seven knights and a mangonel should do a good job, but no, never mind. That was a huge missed opportunity there for the Viper, I think. He could have collapsed on these crossbows, and by the time they realized what was going on, the mangonel would have showed up, at least killed four or five of them. So, the Viper choosing a bit of a more... How do I put this? Respectful? <laughs> Defensive? Safe course of action? Adds in more knights, 11 of them. 
But now the crossbows are on the high ground, which means they should be able to take a bit more of a punch. And there's another contingent of crossbows. 31 crossbows. I was expecting melee versus melee. I was expecting plus 10 attack against infantry versus trample damage infantry. I was, I was looking for a castle, but he does not have a castle to research Druzhina just yet. But no, we're getting full on range. And finally, <laughs> with 31 crossbows, our Norwegian Aztec is getting ballistics. I think he realized, hey, wait a second. Why the hell am I missing every single freaking shot that these crossbows are taking? The Viper, though, going cavalry, not a bad idea. The Mezzo Civs always super duper exposed to faster cavalry raids, just like is happening here. These knights are going to get a good amount of work done. But the town center is fully garrisoned. The armor. The armor. What's the armor on these guys? Oh, yeah. So, uh, no, no, we didn't see it. Plus two. Oh, now the knights. The knights have to get the hell out of here. You cannot take on... Ah, oh, he doesn't even get the monk. So, a uh, bit of bloodied noses for both players. Light cavalry being thrown in for our slap. Fantastic. Use those quicker moving villagers who are on the farms, otherwise known as farmers, I guess, to pump out a whole bunch of light cav and start sniping all five of these Aztec monks. HP still at 50, and our Aztec is heading up to Imperial. Look at the Slav's resources. He is nowhere close unless he's queued it up behind these three or four villagers. But the Knights are back. The Knights are back this time, though. The Aztec has left no fewer than 13 crossbows with ballistics, which means goodbye HP. On these Knights, they're down almost half of their HP. Competing castle up. Okay, so our Aztec... What's the game plan? I mean, this is very cocky. <laughs> I mean, this is just super cocky. He doesn't see the castle just yet. We know it's cocky. He thinks, okay, I'm getting, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put up a castle. The castle's going to go up a little bit quicker than I'm going to hit Imperial. But now he sees his opponent's competing castle. I expect this town centered, obviously, to be canceled. But the fact that he's placing this town center here, oh, he's not paying attention. He's not paying attention because he's being raided in the back. And look at the Viper showboating in the in the front, keeping these crossbows occupied. Holy shit. How many crossbows? One, two, three, four. And a pikeman. And another one. 13 kills for a castle that just went up a second ago. Holy moly. A second castle. This is what I was going to say. Our Aztec, the by virtue of having placed that town center, shows us that he wants to make his presence here permanent or as permanent as possible. That wasn't a mining camp. That was a town center. That is a heavy investment. You are not the Sicilians. You are not the uh, Spaniards. You do not build that town center quicker than anything. That is a big investment. Okay. Decide to relocate it to the back. But again, more raiding from the Viper. Big weakness from the Mezzo Civs is being exposed right now. We'll see how our Aztec decides to uh, deal with it. I mean, he can easily deal with it. Take a look at the army count. 46 to 14, and he's an Imperial, which means where are the Trabs? There are the Trabs. <laughs> it's like a, like a cause and effect clockwork, you know, when they reach a Imperial age, these pro players. So he can deal with it. He's got three times the army supply of his opponent, more than three times. So he can position these pikemen everywhere. They don't need any kind of attack upgrades. I would focus maybe more on the armor upgrades, since it's that plus 22 damage that you really want to do. Now, Aztecs... The only difference with Aztec infantry line and Slavic infantry line is that the Aztecs don't get halberdiers. Everything else is identical. But like I said, one gets a plus four attack boost. One has access to a unique unit that does damage to infantry. And the other has trample damage, which is bonkers. Like Cav are going to chase into this. What are the upgrades on the crossbows? Plus two, plus two. He is not upgrading them further. But they're on the high ground. Viper taking a fight from the low ground. Should be able to clear one or two more of these up. But he's not going to survive. Oh, he gets a second one right before he dies. And now the knights are moving forward. These are two dead Trebs, maybe? The monks are doing their darndest. They have converted two knights. The Treb unfurling. Does he hope that the Viper doesn't see or the Viper doesn't want to engage underneath three castles, two castles? Holy shit, three knights got converted. Wow, a good get there by our Aztec. Unfortunately, does lose 800 resources worth for those two Trebs outpost in the middle of nowhere. 
spotting something. Viper does not want to get sideswiped, and now he's going to have to deal with cavalry of his opponent. While he armors up his own cavalry, both players banking very little resources, or rather floating in the lingo of Age of Empires. Uh, why does this unit look like it's under attack? Is it being converted by something? What's converting this unit? <laughs> why is this red dot uh, flashing on the minimap? Okay. Crossbows, stop a stable from going up. And man, oh man, they're getting a good number of kills. The Viper realizes after three of them die, maybe one more will die. But the raids continue. Light Cav against the Aztec. Converted Knight against the Slab. So yeah, I, I, again, our Slab is making himself at home here. First castle down. But a backup castle training his own Treb, which, by the way, will be on the high ground, it looks like. Yeah. NBA, holy shit, six trebuchets. Like I said, this center position for him is about as permanent as you want if you're going straight into the guts of your opponent. That being said, his majority, the majority rather of his army is back home dealing with these raids. He's got 57 army supply. 22 of it is here, plus six trebs. All these light cav are not going to accomplish anything. That was a complete waste of light cav. A complete waste of light cavalry units. Go after the monks. Go after the monks. Ah, uh, missed opportunity there again by the Viper, who does manage to get the monks. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I re recant for a, an umpteenth time. No monks survived here, I don't think. No, one did. Where are? Where is he? Oh, no, never mind. He's coming in from the... Uh, he's a fresh recruit. But the Viper is starting to fall. His center is exposed. His knights are now cavaliers. Fully armored, no attack upgrades, but the crossbows are just wreaking havoc. Finally, 31 count has been whittled down to 12, 11. Villagers repairing trebs as the pikemen attack the villagers. No upgrades yet on these pikemen at all. But now the trebs are finally exposed and the viper manages to pounce. Three trebs down. His opponent still has two. And now more and more cavaliers are... Streaming in. Oh, this is fantastic for the Viper. I suspect he's going to lose all of these attacking forces, but not before taking out a castle. And not before he takes out at least two of these trebs, right? Oh, no. Why did you unpack? Why did you unpack at the worst time? The worst time possible. <laughs> oh, yikes. Oh, my God. That was sour. That was so sour. All she wanted to do was repair that treb. Instead, she got a ball of rock the size of herself hurled at her. And somehow... The Viper didn't take out the last three trebs of his opponent. 25 army supply. Finally, he's above 20 army count is the Viper, but now he's down still half the army count. Villager population, about 10% difference. And MBL says, get the hell out of here. I'm going to zone you out with my trebs. Forget your stable for now. I'm going to just push you out. And the Viper, happy to oblige, says, you know what? Take the center. I don't think you're going to do very much damage here or very much damage very quickly. Pikemen and crossbows are not going to take down structures even though they might kill a few villagers so for now i think i'm safe so i'm assuming these are for raids to the south and then oh the viper's planning a multi-pronged attack he is planning to make my life a living hell as a caster as i try to figure out what the hell is going to the south to the center to the north a jaguar warrior pops out unfortunately straight into the welcoming arms of a cavalier villagers <laughs> Oh my god, how many how many fronts are we dealing with here? We've got the central front where our Aztec is kicking ass. We've got the southern front of the Aztec base where our Slav is kicking ass. The Cavaliers to the north are going to die, whether to pikemen or to castles. And there is Garland Wars, which means these pikemen are going to pack a plus four attack. Not that that's going to do much damage against the... Or I should say much extra damage. Eight versus four attack against a unit that has five pierce armor. Again, they're mostly relying on that plus 22 attack bonus. But the minimap all of a sudden is a flame. Two pikemen trying to get rid of some villagers building a high value house. And it looks like even more conversions this time on Cavaliers. The Viper. The Viper is giving up a bunch of his units and finally block printing going down for our Aztec. I'm surprised it took him this long. That's going to add 3 range to his monks, which means 12 range. Think a uh, monk with longbow range. And more jaguars are coming out. Five of them, a sixth one. Is he expecting a uh, infantry transition? 
Like I said, the Jaguar overall, a middle of the road kind of infantry unit, but that attack bonus against other infantry is massive. And oh my God, the Viper is making a skirmishers. I mean, I was a little in shock when we saw crossbows, but skirmishers, they must be for the monks, right? But if they're for the monks, why is he making 23 of them? Oh no, never mind. They're for the pike. Okay. You know what? Even without thumb ring, even without the last attack, even without bracer, not a terrible idea, but I, I mean, you got to keep your cavaliers alive to the north. His base is being ransacked by Jaguar warriors who are clubbing their way. Oh, <laughs> he managed to get that villager right as he died. And now the Viper, is the Viper just uh, focusing too much on raids and, and side attacks? Is he, he seems very confident that he can hold his center here. But now these are eight attack, four plus four. And now they're going to get armor boosts. And the two castles are still here. I don't know that the Viper's game plan here is uh, necessarily the optimal strategy. He's trying to keep his opponent back. Army su supplies are finally, finally have evened out. Villager supply has evened out. Both players, five total population difference between them, even though for a long time, our Aztec was kicking uh, the Viper's butt in terms of numbers. The switch into skirmishers seems to have done the trick. Light Cav and skirmishers now will be able to take out the monks. Only two, three monks left. Light Cav are raiding pikemen having got rid of the villagers no they didn't even manage to stop the house from going up so the house is up the villagers must be dead and the viper is now here back to the south both players kind of watching each other this time the viper is on the high ground should be able to clean up one or two of these pikemen if he stays but he's not sticking around he does not want to lose two of these super weak cavaliers and our Aztec doing exactly what our Aztec needs to do, which is going Eagle Warriors. If you see your opponent has all of a sudden, out of nowhere, doubled down on skirmishers. I mean, the Viper's gold is non-existent. These Eagle Warriors, what's their cavalry attack? Plus four against cavalry now. So they can. I mean, they're not El Dorado Mayan Eagles with 100 HP, but with a 14 attack plus another four bonus against cavalry in enough numbers two castles to support they can do a pretty damn good job shredding these cavaliers to pieces let's see it looks like there's also a battle to the north a battle just south of here and look at that like i said the eagles can just absolutely with enough support shred through these cavaliers all of a sudden cavalier count down to nine Looks like there was another big battle. Oh my God, look at all the bodies on the floor here. Oh my goodness. And look at the Viper's base. Red units everywhere. I've said this a million times. I will repeat it a million more. If you are playing against a Mesoamerican civilization at the later stages of the game, you have to wall yourself in as much as possible. You cannot risk. Yeah, you cannot risk exactly what is happening here. Don't get me wrong, they, you know, it's uh, they, the same goes against, the same goes for playing against the Civ with powerful Hussars. You want to wall yourself in as much as possible. The only difference is the Eagles are pretty damn strong compared to a Hussar. What is a base attack of a Hussar? A 7? Seven? 7 plus 4, 11? These guys attack on a 15. I think they attack a little bit slower than a Hussar on a 2 versus a 1 point, I want to say 9 or 1.8. What's the light cab? Because I know it's a little bit quicker than the light cab. Oh, no. Two? I thought it was 1.9. Maybe I'm thinking of a different... Uh, maybe I'm thinking of Bulgarians? Uh, in any event. <laughs> the point is, I've said this before, and how many games have we seen it? If you let Eagle Warriors into your base, man, oh, man, are they going to absolutely disrupt your economy, whether it's the Aztec Eagles with the powerful attack that can kill your villagers quicker, whether it's the Mayans or the Incan with the extra HP or the extra armor, which can last longer as they kill more of your villagers. You just cannot leave your base open like this. That being said, both bases are actually open. And our Slav, I mean, he just, he doesn't have, I, I think he does have the resources to upgrade his light cap to Hussars, but that'll basically bankrupt him. And not a cheap upgrade to go up to Hussars in the home man. Even more Eagles, even more pikemen. And this is where that Aztec quicker unit production slash training kicks in. And here's what, what did I say when he put down the town center? MBL, he, this is his strategy. This is what he's doing. The Viper, 
a lot of reach around attacks from the side, from the back. MBL says, nah, -uh. I am literally expanding in one direction and one direction only. And I am bringing my farmers. I am bringing my lumberjacks. I am bringing the, the kitten, the dog and the chickens. And I am here to stay. And if you want to beat me, you're going to have to crush the center out of me. And the Viper just cannot. He cannot engage into monks, which will take out his cavaliers. He cannot engage into pike, which will take out his light cab. The skirmisher play, you know what? Upon second thought, thinking about it again, I don't mind it at all. Even though I think, you know, at the end he died with only three. It does necessitate your opponent to switch to these. Which is also not a cheap transition, and Eagle Warriors are not cheap either. These are not Incan Eagle Warriors that are, you know, cost a little bit less uh, food. These are full price Eagle Warriors, so it's not a uh, not a cheap transition. You can tell because he still doesn't even have Blast Furnace, even though he doesn't really need it with the uh, Garland Wars attack. But imagine a 17 attack Eagle Warrior raiding your base with eight Pierce Armor means that these town centers do literally nothing against them. And the Viper put up a staunch resistance in the center. Oh, but the question remains, would he have been better ignoring these side attacks here to the north, to the south? I don't think he was expecting MBL to leave so many clusters of pikemen at home. I really don't. When MBL had uh, triple the army supply, he did a fantastic job leaving those pikemen. Now, they're not Lithuanian pikemen that move faster. They just move at the basic, uh, what is it, 1.1? Instead of 1.21. But man, oh man, were they good enough. This guy's got a kill. This guy's got no kills. But there were raids that were attempted here. And even though the knights did a good amount of damage initially. Before the pikemen and the monks came and slaughtered them. Ultimately, MBL with his center push. Three trebs left out of the six is uh, our winner here. 92 cavaliers. And I can, uh, let's say cavaliers. Because for, I would say, 50% of the time they were knights. 50% they were cavaliers. Pikemen... Nah, I mean, not a paladin, not a halberdier. So, I, you know, silver tier versus silver tier unit here. PKPM at the beginning for the Viper Hera levels. PKPM middle of the game for MBL, almost the, uh, reaching. And yeah, the economies, uh, we saw the villager count was almost, almost identical for a large part of the game. Trash resources going to our slab. Scarce resources going to our Aztec, who collected three relics, 1,200 more gold than his opponent. Not that much more stone, but 4,600 more gold. Let's take a look at conversions. 10 conversions out of 253 army supply is 4%, just under 4%. Not terrible, not bad, but not great either, to be honest. I, I like to see it when it's 10% or more. Then you really know you stuck it to your opponent. You know, you take 10% of their army, it adds 10% to your army. All of a sudden, it's a 20% military swing, and then you just win the game. Kill count, oddly similar. Holy moly, the Viper losing 101 villagers, but taking 59 Aztec villagers with him as well. And the kill count, literally 14 kills apart in an hour-long game. That just shows you how much back and forth. And that's why I said these civilizations, these two are oddly, in some very important ways, similar. Very much melee-focused, very much infantry-focused, very much their buildings, I think, are not the strongest. The uh, They're both missing critical uh, defensive structure features and they both just have really shitty uh, archery range units at the end of the game in castle age maybe they're fine feudal age they're absolutely fine no no reason not to go archers in feudal age or skirmishers castle age maybe think about not imperial age definitely not <laughs> which is why you can see neither player has almost any ca i was gonna say cavalry because my brain is fried uh any ranged units left at all but look at this we knew, didn't we, the second we saw that town center that and this is MBL's push. This is exactly what he wants to do. This is not going to be one of those weak pushes where he places a castle right here in this nook and the castle goes down and then he runs home with his villagers. No, no, they were here to stay. They brought the whole kit and caboodle and brought the barracks, the farms, the granaries or otherwise known as the mills. And with that, MBL just pushes through the center. And even though the Viper's got a good amount of resources, he's got more gold, he's got more food, he's got more wood, he's got more stone. He's got all four resources more than his opponent. What he doesn't have is time because MBL is here. No more castles for him. Druzhina was not, or not Druzhina, Detnets was not researched. Actually, was the either upgrade researched? No, obviously not because he doesn't have a single infantry unit on the guy. I don't even have to look. 
And with that center push, MBL just takes it in a super fun, crazy, hectic game here out of both players and GG to both of them. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.